So apparently VRAM, it's not a problem anymore. That's at least according to Nvidia. They've got some new AI magic that's supposed to change everything. We've also got a retro GPU mod that's lighting up eBay, a $900 graphics card straight out of a sci-fi fever dream, and a Half-Life remake that looks insane. Nvidia's raking in trillions while OpenAI still bleeding cash, and DuckDuckGo, they just finally gave you a way to block AI garbage from your search results. You know the drill, let's get into it. All right, guys, I don't know what search engine you guys are using. I'm an elder, I'm a millennial. I'm still using Google for the most part, but I've heard a lot of good things about DuckDuckGo, and this is making me want to switch potentially. Check this out. DuckDuckGo now lets you hide AI-generated images in search results. Listen, it's crazy enough. I'm so tired of guessing whether an image is real or a video is real, and just to get some overbaked AI nightmare, and finally, someone has given us a damn filter. Let's check out what's going on here. Privacy-focused browser DuckDuckGo rolling out a new setting that lets users filter out AI images in search results. The company says it's launching the feature in response to feedback from users who said, guess what? I'm sick of seeing a bunch of AI slop when I'm trying to find an image on a search engine. So they've taken some steps to try to remove that from the search results. Check that out. Well, you can access the new setting by searching on DuckDuckGo and heading to the images tab. And then from there, check this out. We'll do it right here so you can see this drop down in the title, AI images. Users can now choose whether or not you want to see AI content by just clicking that show and hide. Super simple. DuckDuckGo's move, in my opinion, is a power play. It doesn't use like a super sketchy detection AI. It just blocks known offenders for the most part with an open source list. It's simple, it's clean, it makes a whole lot of sense. Now, is this the end all be all? Is it gonna catch everything? You know damn right that it's not, okay? This is a band-aid on a bullet wound right now, but hey, check it out. It's a first step towards clearing up all of that AI sludge that is plastered all over the internet. Now, you know what AI is actually really good for? The memes, the Coldplay memes that have been going around ever since that incident at a concert. Those have been pretty good, man. Check this one out. There's a whole bunch of them on there and uh, I have been having a lot of fun with those. When I want to see them though, and looks like DuckDuckGo is letting us choose whether we want to partake in AI images. Very cool. Oh, check this out. Somebody just turned the RTX 2080 Ti into a cyberpunk collectible and now eBay, well, going feral. Let's check this out. It's so crazy to think that this was the GPU that launched with that cyberpunk shroud, the 2080 Ti. This game's been out forever now. A 5090 can probably barely play it, but check it out. Now there's a surplus of these shrouds that were themed around cyberpunk. Let's take a peek and see how you could get one if you wanted one, okay? Users can now convert the RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition cards into cyberpunk editions. How do you do that? Well, when Nvidia made a bunch of these shrouds, they had a whole ton left over. Let's dig into it. Users are now transforming their RTX 2080 Ti graphics cards into full-fledged cyberpunk 2077 editions. Not to get too sidetracked here, but Nvidia is giving away a 5090 cyberpunk edition right now as part of the summer of RTX. So if you want to enter to win, you should definitely go check that out. But back to the story that we're talking about here, a couple of years ago, Nvidia announced a special edition of its flagship model at the time covered with a custom designed shroud. Unlike most recent themed cards, which usually feature stickers or minor paint jobs, this edition, entirely new shroud that was made specifically for this card. Now, Nvidia ran into a little bit of a problem. They said, wow, we made way too many of these coolers and larger quantities than they needed. The leftovers now available for sale on eBay, which is where everything seems to end up, including 5090Ds that can no longer be sold in China. There's a whole bunch of tech treasures that you can find for, uh, I'm not gonna say reasonable, but you can find it for a price on eBay. This means users who already own an RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition can buy the upgrade kits and, with a little bit of patience, transform your card into something truly unique. Now, this is for, obviously, people that are huge cyberpunk fans or just wanna maybe make your 2080 Ti look a little bit cooler. One Redditor pointed out that the cooler may have come from a water-cooled card where someone just removed and resold the cooler, but doesn't quite make sense just to buy the very rare card and then remove the cooler. So here's the explanation that everyone's coming up with. The sellers are offering Cyberpunk 2077 themed coolers for the 2080 Ti, and guess what? It's not just one, there are multiples of these in stock. Many listings mention the cooler as seller modified, but who knows what the hell that means. Now, the only listings for these cards, we haven't found any uh, full cards, most of them, just the coolers right now on eBay. So if this is something that you're interested in, in transforming your 2080 Ti for a game that probably can't run very well on the 2080 Ti, then this is, this is for you. Enjoy. 
just to throw a price out there, you're going to pay anywhere from 185 to 250 bucks for these kits. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, head on over to eBay and check it out. And let's be honest, in a world of cookie cutter builds, a yellow 2080 Ti with a Cyberpunk styling it stands out maybe even a little bit more than a new GPU. It's worth checking out if you're into that thing. This graphics card looks like it was built by aliens on acid and it costs 900 bucks, naturally. Let's check this out. Now, I don't care what you think. I think this is a very cool card design. It's not for everybody, but this is like right up my alley. And spoiler alert, I was going to say this. I have this card coming. So we're going to do a video on this. We're going to do a full build with it. And I have some cool ideas for what we're going to do with it. So we talked about the 9070 XT that Yeston teamed up with Gravistart. I use one at the office. Super cool keyboards, futuristic. Looks like an alien built it. Well, now you have a graphics card that follows that same styling. Check this out. This is a cyberpunk inspired design developed by Gravistar. Now we have pricing on it as well. We're going to dig into that, whether it's worth it or not. Compare it to vanilla 9070 XT pricing in the wild, not MSRP, because that means nothing these days. Let's talk about what you can actually buy a card for, okay? So this story comes coupled with some good news and some bad news. Good news is you can order Yesen's latest GPU without waiting for a global launch, if they ever plan to do that at all. Yesen collaborated with Gravistar, of course, specializing in that cyberpunk PC hardware, and we don't know if it's going to launch globally. In fact, most of Yesen's releases are exclusive to like Asian countries, China, for the most part, China exclusive. You hear that a whole ton. And after only some time, they appear elsewhere at higher prices, such as on Newegg. So you can order it from anywhere because a card is sold by Gravistar and they are totally fine shipping globally. Check this out. So you can see the listing here, 899 bucks. Now let's talk about what that means compared to MSRP. We'll quickly gloss over that because again, it means nothing. 599 bucks is what AMD has the promised MSRP of a 9070 XT at. But what you will actually pay for a vanilla 9070 XT depends on where you look, but about 720 bucks. So you're still going to pay another 150 plus dollars to get this card. Maybe it's worth it if you're looking for the aesthetic, but yeah, you will pay a premium for this. Is it worth the price? Hard to say. We don't have any tests on it yet. We've only seen renders and photos. At this price, one could easily consider alternatives like you could just step right up into a 5070 Ti. If you want to go the Nvidia route, that's totally fine if that's your jam. The company has released a new press statement revealing that this model has a boost clock of 3060 megahertz, 16 gigs of GDR6 and PCIe 5.0. And of course you get that unusual design with a white PCB, which you don't see a whole lot. It's available for pre-order right now. They're going to start shipping them on August 15th. It looks like the community reaction from what I've seen in the comments and elsewhere, design, fire, price, somewhat questionable, but again, you are paying for that look. It looks like a GPU that's cosplaying as a cyberpunk mech, and I kind of love that. So while it might not be for you if you're not willing to pay the markup, if your whole setup looks like a Tron nightclub, guess what? This card, it's your new best friend. Check it out, very cool stuff. Open AI, still not making money, but Nvidia, <laughs> they're basically printing it. Let's dig into this. Open AI, not gonna be profitable until 2029, and test investor expectations, says JP Morgan. Still a private company, by the way. They have not gone public yet. OpenAI's brand, consumer focus, and early mover advantage could unlock a $700 billion total addressable market by 2030, but not profitable quite yet. Now, NVIDIA, who is selling a whole bunch of GPUs to OpenAI, very profitable. They, in fact, just hit the $4 trillion market cap, the very first to do it. I think Apple hit just a hair above $3 million, or excuse me, $3 trillion. Why would I think so small? $3 trillion in market cap. NVIDIA, now worth $4 trillion. Who would have thought this 10 years ago? that our boy Jensen would be the face of a company with a $4 trillion market cap, and it's fueled almost exclusively by AI, with a couple 5090s thrown in there as well. Just a couple. One key takeaway from JP Morgan's report is that OpenAI might find it easier to penetrate its product among consumers as opposed to enterprise users. The bank's analyst says that while enterprise uses are a strategic focus, they're likely harder to crack given indirect model access, appetite for specialized, cost-efficient models, and tough competition. Enterprise AI, very tough. Consumer side, is it 20 bucks a month? That's not too hard of a pill to swallow. I know there's different tiers and stuff, but I think you're seeing a lot of people say, you know what, I can pony up 20 bucks a month if I can pony up whatever for Netflix. We got a couple more details from JP Morgan Chase, and they said that OpenAI's annual recurring revenue during 2025's first half, $10 billion after marking an 82% growth. It believes that OpenAI scale allowed it to balance rapid product velocity with high CapEx. Additionally, while the firm is well equipped to eke out market share from rivals courtesy of its talent and product investments, OpenAI's ability to successfully execute remains to be seen. This is kind of reminds me of, remember the gold rush? I remember it, because I'm that old. 
<laughs> for sure. I'm not quite that old, but nonetheless, OpenAI, they're doing the digging. NVIDIA, they're selling the pickaxes and the shovels, and they already bought the saloon. So NVIDIA making money hand over fist on the hardware side, and then OpenAI obviously trying to attract as many people as possible on both the user side, investor side, all around. It's wild to me that you've got AI companies over here spending billions of dollars trying to make ChatGPT smarter, and then you have NVIDIA who is saying, oh yeah, that's cool, man. That'll be uh, 40 grand per GPU rack. They're just, they're crushing it. At the end of the day, no matter what you feel about NVIDIA, Jensen has figured out the cheat code. You don't need to run the AI. You just need to sell the hardware that runs it and let everybody else fight over the scraps. So regardless what he was meant to be doing as a leader of NVIDIA, and that's make a whole ton of money, trillions even. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. While you're there, there's a little subscribe button that you may want to hit just for fun. I just thought it would be cool. There's a like button too. Don't be shy. So apparently VRAM isn't a problem anymore. NVIDIA's got AI doing the heavy lifting now, or so they say. I'll let you determine. Let's check it out. VRAM shortages could be a thing of the past. NVIDIA and DirectX tech drops usage by up to 90% as seen in early tests, okay? Now this is coming on the heels of a lot of drama surrounding those eight gigabyte VRAM cards. And also they're not really moving a whole ton. The 16 gig variants, different story, but the eight gig cards, not a whole ton of people rushing to buy these. Will this change the fate of those cards? Or are we just putting a band-aid on it? I'll let you decide. Let's dig into it. NVIDIA has received a fair amount of flack lately for its decision to release modern RTX graphics cards with eight gigs of VRAM. There are eight gig versions of the 5060 Ti alongside pricier 16 gig models and the non-TI, the 5060, eight gig version, the 5050. It's not just about the VRAM on that one. It's also, it's running GDDR6 at eight gigabytes. So there's more problems there that I'm sure you know all about already. Well, the eight gigabyte VRAM drama could soon come to an end. We'll see about that. That's at least if some early tests that were performed by an X user using NVIDIA's new neural texture compression and Microsoft's DirectX Ray Tracing 1.2 cooperative vector are true. Now this user, you can see his tweet here. He got his hands on NVIDIA preview driver and he combined it with the SDK beta from GitHub. That's the RTX NTC. Performed some rendering tests to see how the new combination of NTC and DXR's cooperative vector performs. Now these are early, early tests. And let's be honest, this is, I think to a lot of people, a fancy patch for a wound that NVIDIA helped to cause. They just underspect their own GPUs and now they're using AI as a crutch to justify it, at least as it stands right now. Still impressive. Not only does the combination of NVIDIA NTC and DXR 1.2 cooperative vectors improve performance by nearly 80% while rendering, but this is where it gets juicy. It also drops VRAM usage by up to 90%. As this article states, not a typo, 90%. Now, like for, I guess, a small technical reality check, this only works potentially in games that would support it. You know, it's like DLSS. It's great when it's there, but it's not, you know, magically going to apply to your entire Steam library. So something to keep in mind as well. It also requires devs to compress textures at the time of build. So it's not like driver level auto magic. It takes actual work and devs already struggle to implement DLSS or FSR properly. So if you're a AAA dev on Unreal 5 with mega scans and cinematic goals, you're probably not going to throw in a brand new pipeline into the textures to save budget tier gamers, at least not right out of the gate, I would imagine. This is why I'm curious what you guys think about this. I'm not saying that this is like an awful move. I think the technology has to start somewhere, right? But listen, I mean, you can't really ignore the pattern. NVIDIA launches an underwhelming mid-tier card or entry-level card, depending on how you want to look at it. They get roasted and then they pivot into that, you know, AI-powered redemption arc. Also, it's not like AMD isn't in the same leaky boat with eight gigabyte cards either. So I think there's plenty to go around here. But just as a quick final thought, is a neural texture compression, is that going to be the future? Who knows? It might be. But you know what? Right now, it's a clever way to make underpowered cards seem like they aren't. And if that's not the most 2025 thing ever, I don't know what is. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments below. All right, guys, we're ending on a fun one. This is pretty cool. They gave Black Mesa a full RTX makeover, and now your 5080 runs it like a slideshow from 2003. This is going to bring back some member berries. Let's dig into this. Half-Life remake Black Mesa looks stunning with RTX remix path tracing, but struggles to stay above 30 FPS on a 5080 at 4K with DLSS performance. Now, I'm going to show you some side-by-sides. This is from the channel MX Benchmark.
benchmark PC. Benchmarking channels put in a whole ton of work to make videos like these. So if you wanna see more stuff like this, make sure you go subscribe to that channel because he's the one putting in all of the work to kind of show what this would look like. This is the path tracing treatment on Black Mesa. Very, very cool. Black Mesa, the well-known remake of the first entry in the Half-Life series developed by Crowbar Collective, looks great with modded path tracing, but it also proves how gaming hardware, still not at a point where it can run even older games with full path tracing at high resolutions without upscalers and frame generation on. Now this video that we're showing shows MX Benchmark PC. He's showing the game Remix running RTX Remix path tracing, highlighting how path tracing alongside other improvements featured in the mod improves visuals, but also completely tanks performance on a 5080, which is the card that I'm using here. And based on some of the comments from previous videos, you would think that I'm running an AMD card based on how big of a shill I am. <laughs> But we've all got our own uh, opinions at the end of the day. We're just here to have fun, right? And what's more fun than looking at Black Mesa in this state? I mean, this is the most beautiful version of Black Mesa ever made, and it runs a little bit like molasses uphill. So where can you get this mod? Well, Black Mesa Remix mod, you can download it from ModDB. You've got plenty of improvements to remake the first Half-Life game released in 2020. It relights the inbound train ride. You can see there parts of the laboratory and introduces five new meshes, including 2K and 4K textures. I mean, this thing looks absolutely beautiful. If you've ever wanted to see Half-Life through the lens of a Hollywood VFX reel, this is it. Just don't expect it to be 120 Hertz. This is kind of like handing Gordon Freeman a ray traced crowbar and then telling him to fight stutter instead of head crabs. So if you're into this, go check out the mod. Uh, it looks very, very cool. This is a 2025 benchmark killer. It's eye candy, but your GPU, it's going to pay the price. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. And also, by the way, make sure you check out metapcs.com if you're looking for a new system, maybe to run Black Mesa, the RTX remix with path tracing. You're going to need a decent card to do it. Check it out, metapcs.com. If you like this video, make sure that you hit subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Drop a comment down below. Let me know where you're checking in from. And as always, we'll see you next time.